Hello, uh, my name is Paul Winder from Residential Estates. I'm the Development and Acquisitions Manager um, and I bring on the properties that we sell. I wanted to do a little video basically about numbers. Um, numbers is something I deal with day in, day out. Um, it is what, it's the basis of all the opportunities we bring on. Um, it's always unemotional but it's always with the intent to get the best for our investors as possible. We're not an estate agent, we're an investment company. But I've been in property for about 20 years. The vast majority of those selling, so I've seen the highs before 2008, I've seen the lows of the recession, the highs again, and now we're on this slight dip. And that's the life cycle of property. It happens, it has happened through history that this happens. Um, and what I've always found is that people look at the wrong numbers. They focus on the wrong numbers when they're looking at an investment. Um, I'm going to go through two types of investment. One is an asset-based investment, which is the bricks and mortar value of a property against the rent it brings in. And also a yield-based property, such as a HMO. Um, and the numbers you should be looking at that, that on a property that is totally based on the income that it brings in. Um, like I say, I've been in this business a long time and I think it's important that people understand how this all works and now we're hearing this phrase when buy to let is dead. Um, you know a lot of a lot of the foundations for a lot of investors are built on standard buy to lets. They bought them over time, kept them over time, rents always increase, they don't go down so that's a variable that will continue but property prices go up and down at the end of the day. Um, and when they say buy to let is dead now, how can it be when property prices are down, you've got more motivated sellers trying to get out, yet rents are at a whole time high. So how can buy to let be dead if you've got the perfect scenario of lower prices and higher rents? And that's because people focus on the wrong number, um, which is a mortgage rate. Um, so I'm going to try and explain with facts and figures on real life examples of why now is a good time to buy if you are looking for investment, if you're looking for a buy to let, which is a property you buy to let out, to return you money. And I hope, I'll put it this way, if you are hearing this and you are someone who is looking to build a portfolio, one, two, five, six, whatever, or secure an income for your future, for your pension, for your children. You're in this for a mid to long term and this has got a goal at the end of it to give you some financial stability, then carry on listening because it's worthwhile. If you're in this business to get rich quick, uh, find something that's gonna turn around in one or two months, invest with no money, look at gimmicks, um, then I suggest you probably don't watch this and go to Facebook or X or whatever and go and pay someone who's going to sell an offer, someone who's going to sell you their secret. Um, because the fact is that property, strong property investors have always built this on time and patience, but buying at the right time, exiting at the right time. And I think that's where we need to go with this. And like I say, I'm just going to focus on those numbers um, because it is a strong market now, you know, and, and we as a company, or me, are trying to bring on deals that are far better than what they were two years ago and that's just because of the circumstances where we are there are a lot of buyers out there who maybe have come out of really good mortgages onto a lot higher mortgages and now the rent doesn't cover people are coming out because they want to retire um, they've got equity in the property and they're willing to sell it at a price that it wasn't two years ago but I'll go into all that um, and from there I hope you can understand why sometimes times like this are quite important that you can find a good deal and understand the numbers behind it. So as I said, there's variables on a property. Um, there are three things you need to look at. Sometimes two, but there's always a third involved somewhere. One is the price you buy a property at. Um, simple. Um, the second is the revenue that brings you, which is your rent. Um, now, I'm going to take rent out of the equation a little bit in terms of using it as a, a massive thing because Time and memorial rents go up. Uh, there's been articles now saying that there's 20, 25 people uh, looking to view a property, etc., which just increases 
rent rises and, and obviously rent is on the up because people can't afford to buy. And in no way am I saying now is a good time to buy for an owner occupier, it's not. Um, it's not a good time to sell unless you're motivated to sell and that's what we focus on. You know, So it's not every property that we're talking about, it's just about what people are looking to sell. And then the third one is if you're a mortgage buyer is the mortgage interest rate. Um, so right now we've got properties that are lower than they ever have been uh, for a long time. Um, well, the ones we bring on, you got the highest rents, but yeah, the mortgage rate isn't great. So you've got two out of the three perfect things. You're never going to get all three. Um, but there is a way that you can take advantage of that. And the whole idea, these next sort of listings that I'm going to give you that are examples of, are to show you that the, the discount and the higher rents you get negate any interest rates. But when rates do come down, then you are going to see the benefits. And again, when I say about people looking for stability, etc. if you're watching this, I'm also going to say that it's worth watching this if you actually believe that the market's going to come back, which it is. Full stop, it always does. We've probably got a window of time, I think. I think next six to eight months. And as soon as interest rates start coming down, prices will go up again. And then we'll go back to a buyer market. The media will get behind it. People will carry on buying. Because right now, you've got less buyers for property. That means we can drive prices down. Once buyers start coming back, prices go up. It's, it's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate it. So when that happens, prices go up. You miss out on a deal, you know, rentals will be fine, but why would you buy something at a higher price for the same rent? That's that's what it comes down to. And like I say, when mortgages do come down, which they will, let's say two, three years, I don't know, then you can obviously get onto remortgaging, or if you're a cash buyer, then remortgaging, and really making the best out of buying now. So without further ado, I'm going to go on to an example. This is a property that we're about to list um, and I'm just going to run through the figures so you won't see my ugly mug on this now we'll be showing you on a spreadsheet so it's all there and I'm going to try and explain as clearly as I can and with some examples of how this works for you so we have a two bed property in Oldham this is a genuine property um, now two two and a half years ago when there was lots of buyers um, properties exact same properties on this street was sold for £125,000. Um, now what we also know is because this same property has the same tenant in. The rent at that time was £550. Okay, so £125 for £550 rent. Now how you organise a return from that, and I'm also not going into things like stamp duty or deductions because they're relative at the end of the day, uh, they're constants. So whatever they come out of, they come out, it, it, it's all about the gross. So to work out that, what you need to work out is 550 times 12 and divide it by the purchase price. So if you bought this property in two, three years ago, let's say, you thought it looks good, looks a good solid property, you will get a 5.28% return on your cash. Oh, on the purchase price, should I say. It depends whether you buy a cash or mortgage. Now, we've now got this property for sale. So this same property, 125000 is for sale with us at 107000 because we've got a buyer who wants to sell. It's just his time to sell. There's no whys or wherefores. It's just he wants to sell. And he wants to go out to a captive audience who are investors. Now, so the property for sale now is £107,000. The rent is £750 per month. £9,000 per year. So if you have a look at that, 125000 for 550 107 for 750 Which one is better? Pretty clearly it's the second one. So that's where we are now. Now, the return investment now for a buyer, so that's 750 times 12 divided by the new purchase price is 8.4%. If that same rent had been applied to the same buyer, so he's not selling and he bought for 125, then it would be 7.2%. So even the buyer back then is not getting as good a return as the a new buyer is now at £107,000. So that all sounds brilliant, you know. Now, the next bit is the crystal ball bit. We expect prices to get back to normal. It's not much of a dip at the end of the day. So let's take three years and a 5% increase on the price it was two years. I would estimate that this property in three years will be worth about 130, 
1250 that's 5% on top of 125 and let's say the rent goes up conservative by another £50, that's £800 per month. You've still bought at £107,000. So what you need to do is work out 800 times 12 divided by 107, you're getting a 9% return in three years, which is a fantastic return um, and a massive head start on what the original buyer had, what anyone buying in three years' time had two years ago it's now where you take advantage of those. Now, there are two types of buyer. There's a cash buyer and there's a mortgage buyer. And buying with a mortgage, everyone says it's a bad time to, bad time to buy because the rates are high. They are, you know. But what you've got to factor in is, is the price difference that you've paid, so in this case, 18,000 pounds, and the rent that's increased, is that going to negate your monthly amount so buying now on the rate now at the price it is with the rent is it better than it was buying previously with the lower rate and this is where i think people focus on the wrong numbers they focus on the rate it's nothing about the rate it's all about numbers so let's get on to buying there's two types of buyers there's the cash buyer and there's a buyer with a mortgage cash is king right now because it does give you advantages down the line massive advantages down the line but let's say you want to buy with a mortgage um, there's a few things that have changed, you know, two years ago you would have bought with a 25% deposit to buy to let and now you probably need 35% so I'm going to cover that. But let's look at the historical purchase. So buying two years ago with 25% on the full purchase price of £125,000, you would have a loan amount of 93750 which would work out at a rate of 4% which is what it was at 3750 per annum. This is interest only, of course. Um, not that I suggest that's where you go. I'm just, it's just easy to calculate it this way. Your cash investor will be 31,250. That is 25% of 125,000. And obviously there's stamp duty and there's legals to add on that, but just for the sake of ease, I'm doing it this way. Your rental amount was 550 times 12, which is 6,600. So your annual profit per year was 2,850. And if you want to work it out on the cash deposited or the cash that was in there, which is 31,250, that is 9.12% on the 25% you've put in. Now, so buying them 4% and buying now at 6.5% with a 35% deposit. So you're putting more into the property, which means you're more equity in, but you're buying at a higher interest rate. But your price is reduced to £107,000. So your loan amount is 69550 at 6.5%, which would give you a month a yearly um cost of four thousand five hundred and forty six pounds seventy five which is higher than it was two years ago obviously your cash invested is thirty seven thousand four hundred and fifty which is six thousand pounds in more but you've got more equity in the property but your rental amount is nine thousand because that's seven fifty times twelve so your profit is four thousand four hundred and fifty three pound twenty five which is sixteen hundred pounds more than it was two years ago with more equity in the property and a higher interest rate so your cash invested you're getting 11.89 percent on that and you've got 35 percent equity in the property so even buying now at a higher rate you're making more money than you did buying two years ago i hope that makes sense so let's look into the future let's get the crystal ball out and Let's say in three years your property is worth 131,250. You put five with the five percent increase on it. You've got cash invested of 37,450, but you took out a fixed rate for three years of 6.5 percent. And let's just say the rates have gone back to normal, which is four percent. So you re not remortgage the property, you get a new mortgage rate. You go back to your bank and say, I want to change my rate, and they say, Right, you can have four percent. So then your annual returns come down to 2,798. Your rental amount has gone up to 9,600 because your rent's increased over the three years. Your annual profit is 6,802. And your ROI on cash invested, that's your profit, is now 18.16%. Equity in property is 61,700 because you've got 35% in it already. And your property's gone up in value, theoretically, by 24,250. And that's because you bought it below market value from where it was and knowing and provable when it was sold. 
So that's not bad and that's the advantage of buying now. Now, if you are a cash buyer, there's an option of remortgaging. Um, and this is an incredible tool if you've got cash to invest now. It might seem I don't want to tie up on cash now, but trust me, there's a, there's a benefit to it. So let's say that you bought at £107,000. Your gross return right now is 8.4% on your cash, which is better than any savings. Your three year value is 131,250 for the property. So that's the amount, if that gets valued at that price, that's the amount that you then remortgage and get your cash out. So you release 70%, let's say, at 4%, because that's what we're basing on, which is a loan of 91,875. Your cash pulled out of that property is 91,875. Okay, you've paid 107 for it. So that means you've got 15,000 pounds left in that property. 15,125 to be exact. Your repayments on your money that you've pulled out is 3,675. Your rental income is 9,600. Your profit per annum is 5,925. But remember, you've only got 15,000 in the property, so your ROI on cash remaining is 39.17%, which is massive. So you can see how that works and what the benefits are. So buying with a mortgage now, even though it's higher, is more beneficial, beneficial if you get the deal right. And that's what we try to bring to you. So it's about looking I said the easy way to look at it is would I pay 125,000 for 550 a month or would I rather pay 107 for the same property for 750 a month? That's it, it's as simple as that, it's a no brainer. But it's about not focusing on the high interest rates because it really is just a very temporary thing. Well, we hope it is, but that's the way you've got to look at it. And that's how it works on an asset based property. So that is the bricks and mortar valuation of that particular property. What I'm now going to is a yield based property, which is a HMO. Um, a HMO is literally bought for the income it brings in. That is how it's valued. Unless you're in London, the bricks and mortar valuation will not be the same as HMO valuation. It's a commercial asset. It's like you buy a garage, okay? You buy a garage and it's empty, that's fine. You convert that garage into a business, you buy the business. You pay more than what you would do for an empty garage. That's the same as an HMO. The only difference is down in London, where generally the bricks and mortar valuation is higher than the HMO valuation. But that's where you very rarely see HMOs, certainly not for sale, because they usually get made into HMOs. Now, when I talk about people looking at wrong numbers on HMOs, they always look at the purchase price. That's the problem. And they will use a comparison and say something is sold for something less in that particular area. Fine. Okay, now that would work on bricks and mortar. Doesn't on HMOs. And what I want to do is give you some examples um, of a property that we didn't sell, um, well, didn't get a buyer for, and why it was missed a trick on, and the reasons why a trick was missed, even though we tried to explain, just because people focused on the wrong number. So the property was in our hometown of Chester. It was um, a six bed HMO in a very popular area with an impeccable rental history, um, and it was priced at 310,000 pounds. We had a lot of interest, but the main reason why people didn't go ahead is because they said, well, a property was sold for 225 a HMO. A property was sold for 230,000 pounds a HMO. A property was sold for 265 pounds a HMO, and you're asking for 310,000 pounds for a HMO. Now, for starters, they didn't have the same amount of beds, and, and HMOs are different, um, you know, so, just classifying every HMO under one HMO is a bit strange, but the number they focused on was the buying price because they thought they were paying more than what someone else paid. But let me try and explain what number you need to focus on there. So, on all of these four, four HMOs, we have the gross revenue. So that's the money that was brought in through the rentals. On the six bed HMO, it was 33,510 per annum. On the 265 HMO, it was 23,820 per annum. On the 230,000, it was 21,960. And on the 225, it was 17,400. So those that's the rental that HMO brings in. Now, we know how to work out a yield, okay? You divide the rental income by the purchase price. So you're paying 310 
okay, and someone's paid 225. Well, the gross, the, the yield on the 225 was 7.57%, okay? So that's what your return on investment is. Before all costs come out, but again, they're all relative, they're roughly the same for HMO, so forget that, it's a percentage of that. On the 230 property, it was 9.54%, so that was far better than the 225. Easy to see, isn't it? You know, you're getting 1.5% just for another five grand. But again, it's the percentage that's so important on this. On the 265, it was 8.78. Okay, so we're all in roughly the same ball, ballpark. So the six bed, the highest, the highest priced HMO on there, was generating 10.8%. So that is almost 50% better than the 225 in terms of how it functions. Now, I'm not saying that everyone has the budget for 310, but what I am saying is the best HMO sold on that street, the best return on investment sold on that street was the £310,000. And numbers back that up. And that is as simple as that for HMO. That is all it is based on. Any yield-based product, it is based on what it does. So that was the best one, but the focus was always on I think I'm paying too much for a property, even though you're earning far more relatively for that property than you were doing on any of the other ones. You know, so it's just a matter of understanding how it works. I know it all sounds a bit blunt and stuff like this, but this is it. We're all, anyone who's listening to this is in this to get the best possible future, the best possible returns, and that's what we try to bring. We're not just bringing a property off right and even saying, right, okay, this is this. We are speaking to motivated, sellers and we want more to better buyers but they've got to understand what the numbers are because if we can give you a head start on that investment we can give you a three four you know when you look at sort of nine percent on a buy to let which is what we're talking three years it can take people 10 years to get up to that you know everyone knows someone who's earning 10 15 percent on a on a buy to let as a landlord which is fine but ask how many times how many years it's taken to get to that most buy to lets if you buy off the open market around about four or five percent and what they will do, they'll sit on that property, they won't be mortgage it unless they really want to, down the line to reinvest, but they want over leverage, should I say. And then as rents go up, your yield goes up. So to get 9% or sorry, 8.4% from the off is a ridiculously good deal for the same property that's been proven to sell in the past for more and will do again in the future because it's always like that. And we are just going through a little one of those we are not in 2008, 2009. And that's the other thing to think about this. Yeah, recession, recession happened, but you tell me, somebody bought in 2007 at the full market price. Again, somebody bought in 2008 the same property that probably went down 50%. Who's in a better position now? Them two properties are still the same. They've not changed and they're worth the same price. The difference is someone bought at 50% less than somebody else because of the timing. And this is where we are now. The gap isn't as big. You're only going to be getting between 10 and 20% below market value, but that 10 and 20% is your 10 and 20%. And that's what I'm trying to explain. That's what we try and bring. And we do that on all our opportunities, whether it's a single property, single resale, tenant or property, our developments, we try and do the same all the way because we're in a time now where we can negotiate on your behalf. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, so I've enjoyed telling you. Thank you.